A new antiviral pill to treat COVID has just been announced. It's called Molnupiravir and it's being developed by the pharmaceutical company Merck. New research shows it could halve the number of hospitalizations and deaths from mild to moderate COVID. Could this be a game changer? Let's find out. What's up Groovy Gang, Asmine here. I'm a doctor from London and I make videos about medicine, science, life as a doctor and learning new things. Hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to see more videos like this. It's completely free and it helps out hugely. So this is big news and we need to talk about it. A pill for COVID. Let's look at the evidence and the numbers to see what's going on here. A quick disclaimer, science changes rapidly according to the best latest evidence. This this video aims to be as accurate as possible at the time of filming, but new evidence may emerge that allows us to update our knowledge. What is Molnupiravir? Molnupiravir is an antiviral drug. COVID-19 is a virus, so it makes sense to try and find antiviral drugs to try to combat it. Now there are loads of antibiotics that fight off bacteria, but these do not work against viruses. I could do a whole other video on antibiotic resistance. Meanwhile, antiviral medications, especially effective oral antivirals, are really hard to come by. There are a very small number that we have available to use. For example, oseltamivir or Tamiflu, which we treat influenza with, acyclovir, which we use for chickenpox and herpes, and highly active retroviral therapy or heart drugs that we use for HIV. But developing effective antivirals is a hard job. That's why it's been so difficult to treat COVID and it's why this new research study looks so promising. How does Molnupiravir work? To understand this, we need to have a chat about viruses. Viruses have a genetic code just like us. A few of them are made of DNA, but SARS-CoV-2 the virus that causes COVID-19 is actually made of RNA instead, just like the rest of the coronavirus family. A crucial time for any virus is when it's replicating inside a host cell, because it cannot survive without a host cell. When it's replicating, the virus has to make an entire copy of its genetic material, its RNA, to produce a new virus. Molnupiravir can hijack this replication process. It's basically an imposter RNA component. The virus incorporates the imposter as its own and the gene replication process just goes haywire. All kinds of mutations start to pop up and the errors keep on multiplying every time it tries to divide until the virus can no longer survive. This is called error catastrophe or lethal mutagenesis. All sounds pretty dramatic, but it's pretty accurate to be honest. It's important to note that no, Molnupiravir cannot make changes to the genes inside our human cells, according to Merck. It can't change your DNA and it can only affect the virus itself. What do the study's results show? We're gonna go by Merck's official press release on their website, link in the description. Normally we'd wait for the scientific research papers to come out, the ones that have been peer reviewed by experts in the field. But they were so excited and impressed by the results that they just came out with it. So how do these research studies work then? Randomized controlled trials or RCT studies work by splitting the participant group into two halves. The treatment group is given the new drug that's being studied. Meanwhile, the control group is either given a placebo, like a sugar pill, or the next best available treatment. The ideal trial is double blind, where neither the participants nor the experimenters know which group is getting the real drug. This reduces any potential bias. And multi-center trials that are conducted in several places at once also reduce the risk of systematic errors coming into play. This research study fits all of the above criteria and it's as close to an ideal clinical trial as you can get. Merck have terminated this study at phase three. Clinical trials normally have four phases, but the results were so good that they felt that it was unethical to keep giving the participants a placebo when it was already evident that Molnupiravir was doing a hell of a lot of good. In fact, 
Merck have applied for emergency use to be authorized in the US and worldwide. Let's take a closer look at the statistics. I'm going to give you a visual summary. Let's crunch some numbers. Around 23 different countries around the world were involved and the research study took place in over 170 different sites. The study recruited laboratory confirmed mild to moderate COVID-19 patients who had at least one risk factor, for example, age 60 or over, obesity, heart disease, and diabetes. They were given the drug within the first five days of the illness during the viral phase. This is really important to reduce viral replication as much as possible before the body launches an immune inflammatory response. Then after 29 days, the number of hospitalizations and deaths in each group was analyzed. In the placebo group, 53 out of 377 people were either hospitalized or died. That's 14.1%. And in that group, there were eight deaths. That's 2% of the placebo group. Meanwhile, in the Molnupiravir group, 28 out of the 385 people were hospitalized. That's 7.3%. And no deaths were reported. Going from 14 to 7% means that Molnupiravir roughly halved that number. 50% fewer hospitalizations and deaths in mild to moderate COVID. But is this just random chance? Normally in scientific studies, we're happy when it's less than a 5% chance of the results being a fluke to say that these are significant results and that we're pretty sure that this has worked. In this case, they've reported a 0.12% probability that this is a fluke. That's pretty convincing. So we shall eagerly await more results to come out because this is really exciting stuff. Let's talk about what Molnupiravir is not. Is Molnupiravir a magic bullet? That remains to be seen. It looks very promising for mild to moderate COVID cases and when it's administered at the beginning of the illness during the viral phase. But it may not be anywhere near as effective for serious or advanced cases of COVID. And Molnupiravir is most certainly not a replacement for the COVID vaccine. Prevention is always better than cure. We already have significant evidence to show that COVID vaccines reduce the risk of serious illness, hospitalization, and death. And it's already available to so many of us. Taking the vaccine means you can avoid a serious or life-threatening case of COVID that results in hospital admission or even death. And ideally, we should really continue to wear masks, wash our hands and maintain social distancing in order to protect ourselves and those around us from spreading COVID-19 even if we've been fully vaccinated. However, we can remain hopeful that we're continuing to find solutions against this awful virus and that we can somehow find our way out of this pandemic. There are resources in the description where you can find more information from reputable sources. You might want to watch some of my other videos below where I describe medical topics in a fun way or my Junior Doctor Diaries series where I talk about life as a doctor. I hope you've enjoyed, I hope you've learned something. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and until the next time, stay groovy.